yes so yeah we will continue from uh, where we had stopped in the last class uh, so i'd just like to request somebody to pray and then we can get into our uh, time of study today so anyone would you please like to lead uh, with a word of prayer please Okay, uh, Dev, would you like to pray? Okay, ma'am. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and for this wonderful morning. And we thank you that you have given us this opportunity to uh, come together as a class to uh, to learn from your word, Lord Jesus. We pray that you anoint Pastor Nancy as he speaks from, from your word, as he teaches from your word, Lord Jesus. Let every word that comes out of our mouth be anointed by your by your spirit and and with your wisdom and your knowledge lord jesus so that those words may um may give us life in our spirit lord jesus and we can learn so that we can learn it accept it and lord jesus, and lord and lord we can comprehend everything that you want us to know lord jesus we thank you for this time once again we submit each and every student who are here and person and seeing that in the name of jesus i pray Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Dave, for leading us uh, in that word of prayer. So we'll get back to what we were looking at in the last class. So we said that, uh, you know, Jesus, uh, initially we saw the description of Jesus as deity and then how John the Baptist uh, talked about Jesus being much greater than him. And then we went on to seeing how jesus did uh, a sign he began doing uh, his signs and miracles in cana by turning water into wine and then in continuation we saw how the disciples of john the baptist became the disciples of jesus okay and how jesus uh, uh, spoke over the lives of different people so you had a uh, uh, you know, Andrew bringing in Peter, you had uh, Jesus uh, speaking over Peter's life, Jesus speaking over Nathaniel, knowing that he's a good man. And then we went on, you know, in that way, we just went on. There was a Nicodemus who came to Jesus. So all kinds of people, different class section uh, of society, they are coming because they have heard about Jesus. And the ultimate uh, requirement that God puts before the people is to trust in him to know that he is the son of god so again when nicodemus comes and he tries to ask him certain theological questions uh, his answer is that you must be born again so it's important to be born again we we talked about that and then moving on we saw that uh, you know there there was a little bit of a uh, uh, like the pharisees were not very happy with jesus so he thought okay how about i move out of where I am right now. And then he started moving towards uh, Judea, right? Uh, and he decides, he, uh, sorry, he left Judea and departed again to Galilee. So he was going to Galilee. And the shortest route was through Samaria. Uh, but the Jews would not take that route because the Samaritans were people who were considered as half breed by the uh, Jewish people. We didn't go into the details of that, but basically it's something like uh, when the Babylonians uh, had fought, they took away the, the cream of the society. So there were uh, people who were well-to-do, educated, all that, you know, the Samaritans, such Samaritan people, those people were taken captive by the Babylonians. But the in Samaria, the people who were left behind were the so-called lower section and uh, nobody really wanted them. So they stayed back. And uh, in the region, as people from other parts, uh, you know, started coming in, these lower class Samaritans intermarried. So for the Jews, uh, the people who remained in Samaria, they were already the lower section and they had also intermarried. So they just felt that, you know, they're so mixed up and uh, they no longer know, uh, you know, the, the the ways of God or the, so they, they basically thought that 
everything has been diluted you know religion culture everything has been diluted and so they never liked the samaritans they looked down on the samaritans and even though it was the shortest route they never took that they took some other way to go to uh, galilee but we see jesus going through samaria and uh, we see the humanity of jesus that he became thirsty if he was not human how will he become thirsty but it tells us he was tired and by the third third hour of the day is it third hour or sixth hour i think it's a sixth hour of the day it's roughly about 3 pm uh, in the afternoon so you can imagine in the middle east how hot it would have been so he's thirsty and he goes to the well and at the well it was customary for women to come and collect water uh, and usually they say in the mornings but for whatever reason one woman came in the afternoon and she was collecting water and jesus began talking to her so we saw that whole thing of how uh, jesus asks her for water and uh, she surprised that a jewish man is talking to her and then you know uh, while they are talking jesus says if you if only you had known uh, that who is speaking to you i am able to give you living water so see you see even in the case of nicodemus jesus presented that he is the way to life and in the case of the samaritan woman also the discussion is about normal things natural things but ultimately jesus wants people to know him so he's bringing the conversation to that uh, that point he talks about living water and uh, the conversation from there it moves on to she asks a theological question oh which is a good place to worship so then jesus tells her look it's not about the place right because the time is coming when the father seeks true worshipers they will worship him in spirit and in truth so her question was where but you see god chooses to answer what he thinks is important for us to know so jesus said he answered mainly the why and the who okay i will be able to offer true worship to god so in spirit and in truth and of, of course how they are going to worship the lord so once this is done you know it was uh, probably a better thing for a man to talk to uh, a couple than just the woman in those days because it could have been considered you know it would have gone down in a wrong way so maybe because of that jesus said where is your husband and then you know she begins to answer the question okay uh, but jesus through the word of knowledge reveals that she has had failed marriages and also right now she is in a relationship where that person is not her husband so when he brings out these things the woman says oh i perceive that you are a prophet okay i perceive that you are a prophet then uh, uh basically she gets so excited uh, about the lord jesus that you know she goes and she tells everybody that he has told all things about her which again it's not true but she was so excited that she exaggerated uh, what jesus had actually done for her by this point you find that the disciples are back and they have come back with food for jesus again talking about the humanity of jesus if he was not you remember when we talked uh, in uh, one john uh we we said uh, actually the epistles of john we talked about how there were gnostics at that time who did not believe that jesus was fully man they were willing to say that jesus is fully god uh, but you see it's problematic even if we say that jesus is not fully man or if we say that jesus is not fully god either way he cannot be the perfect sacrifice of the father so it's denying christ uh of who he is right or denying that jesus is the christ so it's problematic however uh, in in this case it's so clear you know jesus is so uh dependent on the natural processes he is asking for water now his disciples are coming back with food uh 
and you know that that shows you that he is just like any one of us okay so that's where we are at so right now uh, let me read from verse 28 okay so this is about the woman uh, going into her city and telling the people then the woman left her water pot went her way into the city and said to the men come see a man who told me all things that i ever did could this be the christ then they went out of the city and came to him okay so lots of people came uh, to jesus in samaria and they believed in him now after this is when you know we will talk about uh, philip doing ministry in samaria later in the book of acts after a few years you know philip will be doing ministry and see how god loves places he loves uh, people he loves towns he loves cities okay uh, and jesus also in his lifetime had done ministry in samaria so because of the prophetic word or the word of knowledge which was spoken over this lady many came to believe right they came and they believed in jesus so every time you find that jesus uh, jesus is directing people to know who he is and believe in him so even the sign which we saw the water turned into wine what happened the disciples believed so belief is coming faith is coming in the hearts of the people as jesus is speaking to them as he's doing the miracles so that is what god expects when we read the word when we learn about christ faith should arise okay we should believe we should trust and that is how the journey of faith is so if we read it and then it doesn't change us then you know something is wrong with the way we are understanding god but here you see chapter by chapter that is god's invitation to us jesus in what he said in what he did you know the people started believing he did the miracle people started believing so that is how god works and that is what it produces in you know people it should produce in people so now moving forward the disciples brought him food and when they brought him food you know jesus had a way of talking he would take the natural things and then he would speak some spiritual truth so earlier when water was being discussed he told the lady uh, okay you want to give me water if only you knew you know who's talking to you i am able to give you living water or in other words your thirst your longing and we know that ultimately he was referring to her spiritual longing i am the one who's able to satisfy it so that is the point he was making now the disciples uh they come and they urge him to eat he says to them i have food to eat of which you do not know so he's using the natural eating and food to explain something spiritual so then obviously the disciples are shocked they're saying what is he saying why did he send us that he told us to go bring food and now he's saying i already have food what jesus you know what are you trying to say but it was a spiritual truth which jesus is trying to bring out so he says uh the disciples ask him has anybody brought you food before us so he explains the point and he says my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work so what is he saying he's saying see when we eat food what happens we are nourished we are again satisfied right deeply satisfied and we are strengthened so jesus is saying his satisfaction his strength right his nourishment comes from engaging in the work which god has called him to do so he says my food is to do the will of the father so as long as i am doing what god has called me to do i am strengthened i am nourished i am satisfied and it's not just you know a little bit of what god had called him to do but he says to do it and to finish his work 
so that encourages us for us also to lead a fulfilling life we need to fulfill god's purpose for our lives okay we could be engaging in different things in our lives and hoping that those things will uh, somehow you know it, it, it somehow life uh, goes on and the journey of life takes place and maybe you know those things are good enough for us to engage in but look at jesus's life it's a life of purpose and that is something you observe the whole time because he says this is happening because it was said or what was said is now being fulfilled so jesus is in line with the prophetic word jesus is very much in line with the purpose that god had for him you know he uh, later we'll see he'll tell his disciples that i'm going to uh, you know die we we saw in fact earlier he said this temple i am going to destroy it and then raise it up on the third day so he was always talking about his purpose and that is the life of jesus even now he's saying what is satisfying in life ultimately you know the things around us yes they satisfy us a little bit we can't say that oh i don't want money or i don't want this or i don't want that yes all that is to bless our lives but ultimately you know he says the fulfilling thing the satisfying thing is for a human being to live according to the will of god for their life that is what will satisfy us so he talks about that and he says and i want to finish and that should be our goal right so our goal should be that i must walk in the will of god i must also fulfill the purpose of god for my life and that is an exciting journey to make that is the most uh, uh, beautiful and rewarding journey for anybody to make and that is the example which jesus has given us in the word so that is what jesus was saying to run the race paul paul talks about the race right to run the race and finish the race okay for the purpose that god has for us we have to hold on to it uh, and jesus was telling his disciples purpose is very important okay moving forward and then he begins to talk about this purpose you know and what is the purpose of god we know that during his lifetime jesus preached the message of the kingdom of god so he said the kingdom is here the kingdom is within you okay and he did miracles and said the kingdom is upon you now so his work was about bringing people into the kingdom of god so he says look similar to how people say that uh, when you look at the fields after you sow there comes a time when there is a harvest so he's telling the disciples look in the when you look at the world around you or the people around you they are like those those uh, crops which have been planted and uh, you know when you look at them it's as if they are ready to be collected so he says lift up your eyes and look at the fields for they are already white for harvest or he saying people are ready to be brought into the kingdom of god okay and he says that that is our duty even that that is that is what jesus came to do right he came to pay the price to initiate the coming into the kingdom of people so he says it's as if people are everyone's ready the harvest look at the fields it's white for harvest somebody has to go and collect it the season has already come for us to collect the harvest and he who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit for eternal life that both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together so once again you know he is talking along the same 
theme of doing the will of the father which is work which is labor so he says when we are doing god's will which is to bring people into the kingdom of god now we may be doing different things in the kingdom okay somebody is preaching somebody is uh, uh, you know serving somebody is uh, compassionately ministering to people so different things we are doing in the kingdom of god but when we are doing it with the goal of uh, bringing people to the knowledge of christ what happens you know there is a reward so that's also an encouragement people are ready and there is a reward he reap, reaps he who reaps receives reward meaning when people labor for the harvest there is going to be a reward and he says gathers fruit for eternal life and what kind of a reward is this it's not just when we serve in the kingdom of god it's not just something that will fulfill us right now but eternally eternally rewarding eternally fulfilling gathers fruit for eternal life okay so it's a very blessed reward and even right now those who are laboring for the sake of the kingdom what is the other benefit we see that you know we rejoice together everyone who is laboring rejoices together so it's beautiful to serve god one is it is fulfilling then there is a reward the reward is an eternal reward and we see that while doing this work we are able to rejoice with those who are also serving in the kingdom of god so he is basically talking about serving god and you know life purpose and the reward and all that to the disciples uh yeah so then he kind of talks a little bit about you know it sounds more like a team work for in this the saying is true one sows and another reaps i sent you to reap that for which you have not labored others have labored and you have entered into their labors so so he's also reminding uh, the people that the disciples they are not the first ones to serve in the kingdom of god because earlier you have had so many people of god you know you had the prophets you had uh, devout men those who have prayed those who have spoken god's word those who have served israel okay and god is reminding the disciples you are coming after them they have done their part now you have to do your part but remember that there are so many laborers in the kingdom of god and together we are all serving god so you see how jesus had a way of he really carried the wisdom of heaven okay uh, and he took every opportunity to disciple that's why we say disciples because in the jewish culture a disciple was somebody who would follow the life of the leader and that is why earlier we saw jesus said come and see the people who want to uh, become jesus's disciples those who were john's disciples they have become jesus's disciples so he says come come with me stay with me learn from my lifestyle and every now and then any opportunity he gets you know it's like a teacher who really wants to build up the student okay so in uh, uh like anything any subject actually uh, you would find that the teacher would train the student to tell all the small details okay uh, of you know uh, whatever the procedure or um, the, you know the 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 subject so any incident the teacher will say okay look now it happened like this why did it happen now tell me and then the students will give the reason so he's trying to help them get the the hold of the subject right in and out and that's a real teacher and that is how jesus is he wants to disciple these people so any and every opportunity natural opportunities he's taking to reveal spiritual truth and even us as leaders elders in the church pastors it can be something simple but we can speak the word of god through it you know parents do this right so when children are uh, um, at home it can be something very simple like you know uh, i don't know uh, cleaning the room the room is a mess and you have to clean the room so you just 
help them do that but at the same time you know teach them something about discipline teach them something about uh, like you know order so basically it's about the heart of the teacher how well do you want to equip your student or your disciple and jesus is taking every opportunity i'm sure he knew that he had roughly about three and a half years here on the earth but he had to impart all the wisdom which he had with him or if not all whatever he needed to right he was doing his best to give it over to the disciples okay so as i told you earlier in samaria uh, when jesus had spoken to that woman and she went and told everybody we see that many believed right many samaritans believed jesus and uh, you know that was kind of the way in which jesus had done his ministry in samaria so again you notice sometimes we minister to one person okay and we think what can happen you know maybe god has called us to some cities and we don't know how we are going to touch the city yes we can pray prayer is very important you know we have studied about it in uh, about uh, when we talked about building the local church um, uh, about intercession how it's a spiritual engagement so prayer is important in addition to that after praying for the city uh, you know god sends people for us to minister to and in this case in samaria only one lady now how do we if we if we are uh, thinking in the natural way we may feel that this is not how the breakthrough will come god i will preach in a crusade then a lot of people will be saved in the city but you see how god is working for samaria through one lady one lady at the well and jesus ministering to her is touching the entire city because we read in verse 41 many people came and verse 41 and many more believed because of his own word so she came she told everybody many others came and you know jesus ministered to them and it also says jesus stayed two days i told you earlier that the background of the samaritans was not something uh, that jews liked so they never even wanted to go through samaria but look at the compassion of jesus his heart for equality he is not looking at class he is not looking at you know background but human beings because christ died for us right for mankind so that's all which mattered to him even man woman didn't matter jesus did not wait for a man to come to the well or you know something else but there was a woman it's okay no bias so he ministered so what are we saying we are just saying that every human being we may share the gospel with one person but don't underestimate it right who knows that might that one person might be the open door for the gospel to spread to the entire city and we have seen this in the book of acts ethiopian eunuch philip never knew spending some time with the ethiopian eunuch means gospel is going to touch the continent of africa so we don't understand god's design from the highest level but we have to be obedient and every soul is important in the kingdom of god we must not think that god works the way we work so especially you know if you have a ministry where uh, you're still building right and one by one people are coming into a god's house never feel bad that what is this only one person what is going to happen through one person jesus didn't think like that the city of samaria was touched by through or it started through the lady one lady so any person that god sends our way we can be excited 
to minister to them and we really never know how that can touch multitudes of people later on right so do your best for every single person who god sends okay um okay so these people who believed we are also told that they told the woman now we believe not because of what you said for we ourselves have heard him and we know that this is indeed the christ the savior of the world so the people of samaria they believed in jesus with their own faith so it was not the woman's faith but they needed their own faith to put their trust in jesus you know this is true even in families the parents can be very good believers but that doesn't help the children because the children have to accept christ as their savior as their god okay so somebody said you know god does not have grandchildren meaning every single person has to respond in a fresh way personally to the message of the gospel that's when they can be saved the way jesus told nicodemus you must be born again okay if your father is born again doesn't help you if your father is born again that's good for him but you must be born again and here in samaria the woman accepted jesus but others also accepted jesus personally that's why we say right personal savior not just like a community one person believed in the community so already all the people in the community are fine it doesn't work like that each one has to respond and the people are telling her look it's our own faith now because you told us we are not believing we have already tested tasted and we have believed so it is a personal faith now so jesus has now traveled and he comes to galilee remember that's where he wanted to come so he comes to galilee so after the two days he goes out of samaria comes to galilee uh and uh over there uh it feels like you know the galileans they received him uh and you know they they jesus continued to do his ministry so they receive him uh because of whatever he had done so having seen all the things he did uh, in jerusalem at the feast for they also had gone to the feast so based on his works they also kind of believe him now from galilee jesus goes back to the place called cana cana you remember the place where first time he turned water into wine over there now another man comes to see him and we are told that he is a noble man this person uh, his son is very sick okay and we are told that he comes from capernaum so you know people are coming from other cities they have heard about jesus and they are coming from other cities and also notice jesus is traveling right so jesus went from judea through samaria to galilee from galilee to cana uh, so jesus is traveling so obviously people have an eye on this jesus and this man his son is dying so somebody would have told him follow that jesus he's going here oh today he's here tomorrow you know he will be in this city so he understands the itinerary of jesus and he is following so he goes to cana because finally that's the place where jesus is at right now it's like a desperate father you know if you see any anyone who is desperate um they are ready to go after the solution so this man why was he desperate because his son was sick so sick that it's actually you know at the point of death so he come when he heard of jesus he he came out of judea to galilee uh, and then you know he finally found jesus uh, in cana and he kind of approaches jesus and he tells him look i am in this situation jesus but jesus tells him unless you people see signs and wonders you will by no means believe so by now as jesus is doing his ministry he realizes 
a lot of people were following him um you could say you know for based on their own mindset they wanted to see signs and miracles and only then they would trust now nothing wrong with signs and wonders and miracles but it is as if that's all they wanted they did not even want the person who did the miracle so jesus understood you know if uh, for example you know breaking the the bread and feeding the people so a lot of people followed him because they thought oh free lunch if i go join uh, jesus ministry every day you will get food don't worry he will say thank you he'll break it we'll all get food so they were following so you see jesus he understood he knew the hearts of the people obviously by the discernment uh, through the holy spirit that these people are not after me they are after the food that i can give them so in the same way by now he had realized people were following him for signs and wonders not necessarily for him so when this man came and he asked my son is very sick jesus at the point of death so basically he's saying can you heal him but jesus is responding sternly and he says you people see signs and wonders you will by no me- unless you see you will by no means believe so it's also like a rebuke right but you see the desperation of this man the noble man he's saying you say whatever you want jesus but you know i really need you you come and you heal my son before he dies okay so he's a very desperate father he's a very desperate father so jesus understands that okay fine you know the, this this man there is some faith in him so what does jesus do he doesn't minister in a way which is easy okay i'll tell you why so jesus tells him go your way your son lives do you think it takes more faith to believe when jesus wants to heal like this jesus is saying um you know go your way your son is healed what do you think is that is what what is easy for us if jesus says okay your son is not well i'll come with you is that easy to believe or to believe uh go go your way your son is healed meaning i am not coming with you what do you think what is easy jesus going with them or jesus not going with them what are your thoughts no thoughts sir not going would be easy just speaking out would be easy i think is it okay okay fine dev so that is dev's point of view what about the others suppose you are that parent and you say come my child is very sick jesus what will make you feel better jesus coming with you to your house or jesus saying okay i can't come you go your way your son lives what will give you more faith in that case <laughs> uh jesus going would be better i think isn't it yeah even i like i feel that way if jesus comes with me to my uh, house to see my dying child i'll have more trust wow he's coming with me he will touch the child okay my child will be well now if jesus says okay nancy i don't have time you go your child is healed it's more difficult for me to believe really you're not coming my child and you're saying my child is healed and you want me to believe that you know it's hard it's very hard how to believe he is only saying something but look at this noble man jesus said he's begging he's saying sir please come my child my child is dying before my child dies meaning i'm at the end of the rope for that what is jesus response go your way your son lives you know it's like that naaman in the old old testament 
then he goes to the prophet he wants to be healed of his leprosy and he expects the prophet will do something he will call down fire from heaven something amazing something dramatic will be done then i'll be healed but what prophet says go go to the river dip yourself seven times you'll be fine and emma is shocked what so simple ah you're asking me to just dip in the water seven times and i should believe this you know sometimes this is how god works he wants us to take him at his word and it's as simple as that but the simple can be hard to believe because sometimes people want you know some drama something great you know jesus uh, imagine if it would have said then jesus went with the noble man to capernaum he traveled and he traveled on a donkey and many people followed him and so much you know very dramatic he went to his house and there he did this he told that jesus made it very simple he said okay let me see you do you really believe okay you go your son lives finished case closed and see the faith of this man the bible says so the man believed the word that jesus spoke to him and he went his way i don't know in many places in the bible it says jesus um, said oh great is your faith and all how come here jesus didn't say anything but great is this man's faith it simply says the man is desperate and jesus says oh, i mean he didn't say i don't have time or anything but it's like that i can't come you go you go to your house your son lives how beautiful it says so the man believed the word that jesus spoke to him that's all okay so this is uh this is how you know god wants us to trust in him this is how god wants us to believe in him right so this uh, if you want to learn how what kind of faith to have the noble man is a great example he is a great example of faith then let us see how faith works so faith works on the basis of the word of god in this case jesus said jesus spoke your son lives so faith comes from god's word your son lives faith arose in that man's heart and what should be the response believe the man believed and he went his way and it was capernaum was not close to galilee it was little far sorry uh, close to cana it was far away so he's going back to capernaum and the whole way he went his way you think about it these days we have phone you know somebody would have immediately called up and said yeah your son is really healed but maybe he never knew what happened but he continued to believe and he went and as he was going down his servants met him and told him saying your son lives okay so his faith had seen him through and the word of god had already touched somebody in capernaum so see there is no distance in the word of god sometimes when we pray for people you know people also expect us to pray long prayer quote lot of scriptures uh, this one you know isaiah 53 uh, by the stripes of jesus but let's say inspired by the word of god we are praying we say okay this is this, this. Uh, we pray that your your son be healed and after the prayer we just say brother don't worry your son is healed sometimes it's very simple how god's power works we don't we should not complicate it right one sentence jesus said one sentence and what do we see here the servants are telling your son lives so then he tries to find out little more okay okay tell me tell me more how did this happen he inquired and he asked them and he understood you know the same time when jesus told him it says the hour when he got then he inquired of them the hour when he got better and they said to him yesterday at the 7th hour the fever left him 
So the father knew that it was at the same hour in which Jesus said to him, your son lives. And he himself believed and his whole house, household. Wow, isn't that amazing? When God speaks, right? In this case, like we see, that word was released in the same hour the son was healed. The fever left him. And earlier also I told us, when Jesus performed miracles, performed signs, wonders, what is the result of that? The disciples believed. The Samaritans believed. Now, the noble man, he, he believed that his son will be healed. But now it says he himself believed. So now he believes in Jesus. Oh, wow. This man something special about him. He is the Christ. So he believed in Jesus. And not only he, but his household believe. Okay, so everything that God is saying and doing, what, what should be the response of the people? Belief, faith. Okay, and faith is arising in the hearts of the people. And uh, the Bible records that this is the second sign which Jesus did in Cana. Okay. All right, so what we'll do is we will take a break. We are kind of um, done with the first session. We will have to look into the next chapter, which is chapter five. So let's take a small break and then we will come back to proceed with chapter five. Okay. So y'all are doing okay so far? Is it making sense, whatever we are discussing? Is it helpful? Okay, that's great. That's great. Okay, I see something here on the chat going with them. Did I miss something? Is it a question? He was trying to answer the, the question. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Got it, got it. Okay, got it. All right. Yep. Okay, fine, class. Let's take a break and we will come back soon in 10 minutes. So, 10 o'clock, we will start again. Thank you.